Hello everyone, it's Leon and I am here with Rob. Hello. Who has been reviewing The Puppeteer. Now, what have you given it? I've given it an 8 out of 10. Very nearly a 9. You I was said, umming and ahhing between an 8 and a 9 for a what, long time. What was the umming and ahhing? Because, uh, I mean, it looks beautiful. It's, it's a early. wonderful, beautiful, original, creative game. Um, but as you can probably see here, you've got like curtains either side of the stage. It's set within this kind of... Uh, it's like a stage show. Is, you the hear game. the audience then, you like yeah, shouting. You hear the audience, that's all great. I, I love that. Uh, but quite often, like between acts, each bit of the game is divided into acts. You get these really kind of lengthy drama style cutscenes where it does like a bit of a stage show. Yeah. And I was loving them at first, but then they kind of started to take forever <laughs> 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. There's, a, there's this one stage later on where there's like three songs, one after the other. I was like, this is this is really nice, but I really want to play the game now. I just want to play the game. And sometimes I think it gets too wrapped up in its whole concept to really let the it, game. It's breathe. massively conceptual, isn't it? Yeah. The audience and the curtains and and the narrators. It's like it's only a couple of narrators, isn't there? All doing like all the voices. Kind I think of thing. it's one guy. I'm pretty sure it's one guy. He does the narration and then he kind of swoops into the voice of the moon bear king who's like it's like Stephen Fry reading the the Harry. It Potter reminds audio, me, of, yeah, like Jack and Nori, that yeah. sort of thing, isn't it? But um, yeah, like you see, the, the scissors now that you're using are like uh, one of the most fun devices so I've used what in the game are the, for ages. What are the mechanics? We know, so the story is that it's Kutaro has, has lost his head and he's got these other heads. I think we're about to see some heads in, yeah. a, in a moment. So can you just sort of explain what are the mechanics, what are the sort of the things going on? Well, basically, yeah, you're a little puppet who's had his head ripped off by the Moonbear King and you've got to like put different heads on as you travel through yeah. the story you pick up really random things like a cherry blossom head or a burger or a fish or a frog um, but you steal this magic pair of scissors called Calibrus and they can cut through loads of stuff like you use them to cut through bosses you use them in combat but you can you also use them for traversal quite a lot in platforming as you saw there he was like cutting through yeah. leaves to move so around so are you steering that is that like yeah you steer it and like later on you'll unlock better abilities for the scissors like you'll do a snip where the scissors start glowing red and then if you press if you snip again just in time you'll like propel yourself forward for a little speed boost okay. and you can, there's also like side scrolling platformy sections that are like you use the scissors to snip along strings and yeah. it, it all goes really fast um, but there's such a fun this is just a really kind of satisfying it, it looks, cutting yeah, mechanic yeah just watching them move yeah. around they look satisfying and the sound it makes as well it's just a really kind of snip snip snippy sound like, a, like they sound like scissors you'd use at school when you're a kid when you're yeah. d doing arts oh, and craft yeah, the, and you're like cutting through you know it's just a really really fun thing to use and okay. a beautiful idea what about so the heads you mentioned them briefly so you you collect these heads if you if you lose it we saw it there if you lose yeah. it you can get it back quickly what happens because the heads have different powers what I was thinking of if you lose a head with a power you need mm. does that ha affect no you never really need the head's powers to progress through the game you need them at certain stages to unlock bonus areas you'll get right. like an area where say there's like a spider symbol and if you have the spider head at that point you can do the spider's action and like the spider will come down and take you to a bonus area. For okay. So there's loads of hidden things in each level that are really well hidden, actually. Like mm. finding everything is going to take quite a long time. Um, but for actual story purposes, you don't really need the heads. They're kind of just there as a kind of okay, like your kind of health, basically. If you lose a head, you've got a certain amount of time to grab it back, back before it yeah. disappears. And if you lose three heads, then it's that's interesting because when, when it was initially sort of presented and they were showing it off it sort of you got the idea that you know the, the, there was a knight head and that was a shield and a ninja head let you drop bombs and it seemed like the heads were different roles you, almost like classes you do collect those abilities but weirdly enough they're not linked to heads right like you, could, you get a shield and when you unlock the shield you'll do like a little animation where he gets a knight's head but you don't actually get to wear that head weirdly I see. and you just get the shield and you can use that whenever you like and you also get yeah ninja bombs like you so, said and there's other abilities you unlock later on. Which... So they're just they're just lives then. They're not. Like, yeah. It's not like you use a head for they're certain lives, jobs. and they're like novelty collection items as well. Oh, lots okay. of them, lots of them are hidden away. Um, like there's a, like a dinosaur fossil head as well, and right. like loads of weird little things. They're ma mainly just like novelty collectibles. Okay. Um, which was slightly disappointing. I'd have liked but that's, to have I thought been, that was it's presented yeah. like that was a point, wasn't it? The heads are have specific roles. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen more kind of. You know, maybe puzzle solving with the heads. You need a certain yeah. head to, you know. Um, quite often, you'll get to a stage and there'll be like a picture, there'll be like a symbol of the head that you haven't got. Like, oh, how do I get that head? And it'll be a yeah. head that's like hidden away. Um, so, yeah, they're, yeah, they're like using each of their unique abilities is, is fun and it's funny, but it doesn't really 
add anything okay. to like the overall story. What about the uh, the rest of the gameplay? Is it, is it is it twin stick? Are you controlling? You have a cat, don't you? And this little girl. Do you yeah, that control them girl, on the second you stick. You do. You control them on the right stick. They're essentially like a little cursor, and you can move them around the world with the right stick and press X to interact on things like say like a bush or you know. There's one stage where you're going through this area and a bunch of guys are throwing boulders at you behind rocks and you can use Picarina, that's the fairy. Right. You can move her up to the rocks and like chip the rocks away so you reveal their hiding place and they run away and they stop throwing boulders at you and things like that. Okay. Um, but she's the daughter of the sun, oddly enough. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the kind of story we're getting here. It's not based so, on any um, actual mythology, they just made up a complete fantasy thing. Not that I'm aware of, that's no. Um, so we're seeing like basically... It's a platformer then. Sort of, yeah. So you're jumping around. Um, are there any other sort of mechanics, any other things that it does? Or you, so it's the scissors to move around, the, the the fairy girl to sort of interact with yeah. objects, and heads to have a bit of fun, basically. Yeah, it's very similar mechanically to Little Big Planet. I'd say in in the kind of tone as well. It's a lot it does darker have... than Little Big Planet. Some of it's very sinister and it's quite violent as well. Like yeah. some of the boss characters, I'm, I'm sure you've seen like in the trailer and stuff. One of the early boss fights is against a tiger, and you have to kill him by cutting his teeth out. Yeah. Basically, you go inside his mouth and just hack away at his teeth, and then he kind of dies quite violently. I think and then the good, back, he's good there. children sort of good children's kind of yeah. story should be a bit dark and a bit mm. violent. Are, they, are the boss fights any good? I've seen a few of them go past, and some of them looked a bit like they might be. There are lots of them. They're yeah. very old school boss fights. That's I thought, I mean, you've got to learn a boss's pattern it's but hard to do those without making them frustrating some of them are frustrating but quite a lot of them are so funny like yeah. they're so well designed like the tiger one is good and none of them are particularly challenging either so there's not that much frustration involved and quite a lot of the time beating them involves using your scissors and any yeah. time you get to use your scissors is great because whenever puppeteer actually using the scissors that is when it's its strongest um, so yeah I quite enjoyed the boss fights like I said they're very old school but not really that frustrating at all Okay, what's the premise behind all the different things we're seeing? Because we're seeing like frogs and drums, bamboo. There's pirate ships. Um, you go under the sea. Is that is what's the kind of the, the wider thing going on there? Well, it's just like uh, all the areas that he's moving through. I think um, we spoke to Gavin Moore a while ago, um, the director on the game, and he said the idea came to him when he was playing a game with his son and his son just went off into the garden and said oh, I'm bored now I don't want to play this game anymore right. and he thought oh okay and that gave him the idea to make a game where the scene is constantly changing yeah. you'll never be in the same place for more than like you know five minutes and you get to the end of a thing because the whole everything that's happening is happening on stage in the game that's yeah. the whole point of it like the scenes are constantly shifting like yeah you see like so, the scenery kind of comes in yeah, doesn't yeah. It? Like, yeah. so yeah it never wants to keep you in the same place for too long and the pace is really, really quick as well. Sometimes that can get a bit tiring, the way it's, you know, constantly, yeah. you know, bam, barrage, a barrage of, you know, different scenery constantly lumped in there. But, you know, the variety is amazing. It, you never really do the same thing twice. There's always something new to do in each level. Cool. Um, this bit especially, this is a great sequence, the See, pirate I, level. I'd, I'd watch this almost as, as a film. It's like the, the, the animation and the lighting and everything is so beautifully done. I'd, I, you say the cutscenes are too long. I'm not sure if I would be overly. Yeah, I guess it's a matter of opinion whether you yeah. think that's a, a fault with the game or not. Um, I mean, you think like they are beautiful. MGS is, and yeah, yeah. You know, part of its selling point is there will be a four-hour cutscene. Yeah, I mean they're they're fun to watch, but yeah. the game for me was so much fun. You know, I was any time I wasn't snipping something with my scissors, I was like, what? Why? So it's almost like too much of a good thing. You're enjoying the game so much, you don't want to sort of yeah. waste time and I think not playing the game. There's almost a missed opportunity. Like they could have added something interactive to these cutscenes yeah. as well. Like maybe you know, there's a, the songs could have been like a rhythm action yeah. sequence, maybe, or okay. I'm sure there could have been something you could have they could have done. Um, but yeah, some of these cutscenes just outstay their welcome, in my opinion. But otherwise, eight out of ten, very rec highly yeah, recommended. Yeah, very, very. One of the most original and creative games I've seen on PS3. Brilliant. And it's, yeah, beautiful. Good Lovely. Fun. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, if you want uh, any questions at all, leave a comment, and uh, we'll speak to you guys later. Bye. And so, with the footprint of urgency firmly impressed upon his behind, Kutaro was off to the foul abyss of Davy Jones's locker to bring pig, sheep, and their vessel, the Moby, to justice.